If you want to hear how one dark detail from the book was hidden in this miniseries, then stick around to the end of this video. This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. If you've seen some of my other IT videos, you know that one of my favorite side characters from the book is the foul-mouthed cab driver. And while we don't get to listen to his banter in the miniseries, part 2 does open up with Bill being dropped off in a cab at the cemetery, where he has his first encounter with Pennywise since returning to Derry. Take your pick, but a bird, a bird, Billy Boy, oh, except for the one on the end. That's already taken. This seems to be a reference to Stan being the one out of the Lucky Seven who already died, although it would have been more accurate if Pennywise had given him a Jewish grave marker. After this encounter, Bill visits Mike at the library, where there is a table set up dedicated to his works as an author. The title, Na, could be a reference to the unnamed werewolf novel that Stan's wife was reading in the book, and the glowing could either be a reference to the glowing deadlights or a parody of one of Stephen King's well-known books, The Shining. Meanwhile, Richie Tozier is rolling into town singing the Beach Boys when he notices his own epitaph on the movie theater marquee. This is a reimagining of a scene in the book where he finds a similar inscription on the rock concert poster in the park. He runs into the library to find Mike, but instead finds Pennywise, who is reading the finance section of the newspaper. Is this supposed to be a joke about its name being Pennywise? Really, guys? Back at Mike's house, the boys are rediscovering Bill's old bike, Silver, and Mike brings out the playing cards. Not just any cards. Bicycle. They always made the best noise. Bill and Mike notice something is wrong when they see two ace of spades and the Pennywise design on the back of the cards. Very similar to the book, where they open a brand new deck, but there are blue and red backed cards mixed in with each other. It is about this time that Ben arrives in Derry, and he goes down into the Barrens where he sees a fat boy getting bullied, giving him flashbacks to his childhood. He helps fix up the boy's scraped knee. Oh, oh no, that cannot be sanitary. It's basically piss and so I'm just telling you. Eddie is the next to arrive back in town. He visits the pharmacy where he picks up his asthma medication and runs into Mr. Keen, the pharmacist from when he was young. Hydrox. H2O. Water. But this is only another example of Pennywise manipulating the town of Derry. Mr. Keen grabs onto Eddie using a hand covered in the crunchy exoskeleton, like that of the spider claw that the seven of them drove away as kids. The last to arrive is Beverly Marsh, who visits her father's old home. There are three names next to the doorbells of this townhouse, Marsh, Burke, and Starkweather. Burke and Starkweather are the family names of the second and third floor occupants of Beverly's apartments in the book. This house doesn't appear to have a third floor, but maybe Starkweather is around the back here. I've still got to applaud the accuracy of that small detail from the novel. When Beverly gets away, Mrs. Kirsch transforms into to the clown off screen. And we hear that same noise heard when Richie's werewolf turns into Pennywise. Which is also heard by Stan later on in the sewers. The remaining members of the Lucky Seven would reconvene for a reunion dinner, where even more hidden details can be uncovered. Viewers of my channel have already been flocking to play Raid Shadow Legends, the new, free RPG taking the mobile landscape by storm. This mega hit of a game takes you inside of a dark fantasy world with more than 10 million other players worldwide, who have enjoyed this game for the last 6 months. Get ready to get real, dark, and epic. Raid Shadow Legends is a mobile experience that has everything you'd expect from a AAA RPG title. It has over 400 champions to collect, a fully voiced story campaign, and the ability to clan up with the boys and raid with friends. With more than 300,000 reviews on the Play Store, it has a nearly perfect score. They have huge plans for updates over the next 6 months, like new faction, a tag team arena feature, and a new clan box. Use my link in the description to start with 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program. Remember Bill's wife, Audra, the actress? She's extremely concerned about her husband after his sudden trek back to Derry. And she meets with the movie producer about his sudden disappearance from the set. You've worked very hard to get where you are, very hard. I know you do nothing to jeopardize that. Or to damage our professional relationship. Or to turn a friend overnight into a violent enemy, ready to crucify you at any cost. Whoa, that escalated so fast. Wake up! And grab a brush and put a little makeup. Richie has a momentary panic attack after realizing his old friends are all grown up now and stops in the bathroom to get a hold of himself. I recently noticed that he knocks over the artwork in the bathroom and never fixes it. After the introductions, they discuss Pennywise. Maybe that means he's afraid. It. 
It's afraid. This little correction is a reference to a more significant detail in the book, being that the creature It is actually a female, something that Audrey discovers upon being taken to the spider's lair. The writer's woman had put out one powerful, horrified thought, oh dear Jesus, it is female, and then all thoughts ceased. Eddie is the only one whose memory about what happened to them as children has yet to come back, and after hearing the word sewer, the cloud over his memories dissipates in a rush. I think I remember who Pennywise was now. Big white guy, red nose, <laughs> about 75 feet tall. 75 feet tall? No, what are you talking about, Eddie? He was never 75 feet tall. The six of them decide to save the serious topic of conversation for later and enjoy their meal. And the music during the food montage is the same song from the building of the dam 30 years ago, because they're rebuilding those bonds that they had formed together as children. After chowing down, they get to discussing the reason that they all came back to Derry, the promise that they would eradicate Pennywise once more. The camera circles around them in the scene, giving the viewer a sense of disorientation as they recall more and more disturbing things from their past. Their heads are spinning trying to process process at all, and the cinematography reflects that. Finally, their fortune cookies arrive, and each cookie contains something that represents one of their fears. Beverly's is the blood, like the blood from her father's sink. Eddie's is a roach, a bug associated with poor sanitation, and somewhat similar to his adult fear from the book, the crickets in his basement. Richie's is an eyeball, because he was always bullied for his glasses as a kid. Mike's is a bird hatchling, referencing his fear of the giant bird that attacked him in the book. I honestly have no idea what Ben's is, but Bill's seems to be a spider, yet another clue about the eventual final form that it would take and these six would come to face. After fleeing the restaurant, they continue their meeting at the library, where they try to get a hold of Stan and learn about his death. Bill recalls Stan's childhood encounter with it as further evidence of how Stan was so deeply affected by the monster. In the flashback, Stan wanders into an old house. Not only is this scene a substitute for Stan's horrifying journey into the standpipe in the book, where he gets trapped inside the water storage structure in a similar way and has to use his bird book to free himself, but I think the house itself is supposed to be 29 Neibolt Street, an abandoned old property that serves as its bridge between the sewers and the surface. We don't fully see the figure that left a permanent scar on Stan's memories, but from what we do see, it appears to be a mummy in the clown suit. This was likely supposed to be the same mummy that Ben encounters in the novel on the Canal Bridge, and finds to be much more disturbing than Boris Karloff's depiction of the mummy in the 1932 film. Pennywise tries to scare them off by hitting the library with an indoor thunderstorm, so they gather up the supplies that Mike has organized and head to the hotel that Bill, Eddie, Richie, Beverly, and Ben are staying at. The stuff Mike collected consists of boxes of hard hats, pairs of boots, and flashlights. The hard hats never actually get used though. Throughout the night, Pennywise contacts Henry Bowers, who is locked up in Juniper Hill Insane Asylum, as a figure that appears to him through the moon. The guard at the asylum is named Coons, named after Stephen King's rival, Dean Coons, a fellow horror author. When It appears before Coons, he drops a roll of quarters. The miniseries never explains why, but in the novel, quarters are used as a form of punishment on the patients to the asylum. It was illegal for the guards, who were called counselors here at Juniper Hill, to carry billy clubs, so a number of them, Fogarty, Adler, and Coons were the worst, carried rolls of quarters in their pockets. They almost always hit you with them in the same place, right in the back of the neck. There was no rule against quarters. Quarters were not considered a deadly weapon at Juniper Hill. Back at the inn, Mike hands out copies of his collection of newspaper headlines corresponding to the tragic events in Derry's past. The first headline reads, Black Spot Club Burns, a story about the nightclub that Mike's father narrowly escaped in the novel. On the back, there's a piece on Derry's lost settlers. The book tells of an Irish group of settlers named the Derry Company that disappeared without leaving a trace before the town as we know it was established. There are a couple of mistakes on this paper. For example, the date listed is April 26, 1960. 60, which was a Tuesday, not a Wednesday. The content of the articles doesn't correspond to what's teased in the headlines either. In fact, the clickbait is so strong here that you'd think these articles were written by Lance Stewart. This one is about the Arctic, and this one's about politics or something. As they all leave the hotel for the last time, the woman at the desk has a few copies of Bill's book, The Glowing, and what looks to be a vinyl with Richie's name and face on it. She's got a pen ready, as if she's about to ask for autographs, but they all leave so quickly that she doesn't have the chance. Before stepping out, Bill sees a woman and a child playing Fur Release by Beethoven. This is the same song his mother always used to play. What remains of the group packs into Richie's car to drive down to the sewer and take down Pennywise. 
franchise. The model of this car is iRock Z, perhaps chosen to signify Richie's love for rock and roll. When they get down into the sewer pipes, spider webs cover the walls, a grim clue about the creature that they would face later that night. The first form of it they encounter is Bill's deceased little brother, Georgie. Although we never see Georgie's death on screen, the child is missing his right arm, a reminder for fans of the book of the disturbing method of his death where his arm is dismembered. In the cavern, we finally discover the meaning of its catchphrase, you'll float too. The bodies of the victims float over the chamber, strung up in the spider's webbing. Also, there's the fact that this is clearly a painting, but who's to say it doesn't have a taste for the fine arts? It is at this point that I would have liked for everyone to realize that Bill's wife is the movie star Audra Phillips and yell out, hey, it got the lady from Black Christmas. Yeah, that doesn't happen though. The original plan for this final boss battle was to have Tim Curry, the man who played Pennywise, in control of the spider somehow, but that didn't pan out. So instead, the only resemblance is when the creature briefly flashes its carnivorous teeth, just like the clown is sometimes seen to have. Then this happens. I believe in Santa Claus. I believe in the Easter Bunny. I believe in the Tooth Fairy. Eddie, Eddie, what are you saying? You're a virgin? And they beat it. And they kill the monster. I love this miniseries, but that isn't my favorite part. As things wrap up, we learn that Richie Tozier got into movies after returning to Hollywood. The movie that he's shown shooting is on scene 574? Oh my god, that is a long movie. And I thought it was long. There's also an easter egg on the slate. The cinematographer of Richie's movie, Jay Berezuk, is the name of the script supervisor in IT. Bill is still rehabilitating his wife when it's time to leave. The same cab driver from way back at the beginning picks him up, but he wants to try one more thing first to try to save Audra, and takes her for a spin on his old bike, Silver. This bike saved little Stan's life once. Mine too. We were going so fast, I think we beat the devil. Like in It Chapter 2, this is an audible reference to the epilogue's chapter title, Bill Denbro Beats the Devil. The film goes to black, and everyone gets their happy ending. Or do they? Over the credits, Pennywise's laughter can be heard, continuing to reverberate. Could this imply that Pennywise lives on after this second defeat at the hands of Bill, Bev, Ben, and Richie? The idea is explored more in Stephen King's other books, so make sure you watch my horror history episode on Pennywise to find out. But before you move on, make sure you subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week, ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.